Did you help Lincoln Clay murder Sal Marcano and all prominent members of his crime family? You're goddamn right I did. Hold my head, oh baby, it's a long way down to the bottom of the river. Lost the largest number of casualties in the ongoing conflict. We're at E3 2016, catching up on Mafia 3. Uh, I gotta say, um, um, uh, the first thing that struck me about this game is the setting. New Bordeaux, uh, which of course is based on New Orleans. Yep. I think it's a brilliant setting for a game. We've all played lots of games based on Los Angeles, New York, Chicago, or uh, San Francisco, perhaps in particular. Uh, it's good to get something a little bit different. Can you tell us what, what went into the decision of going with New Bordeaux? It's actually the original mafia town in America. Like mm -hmm. That's where the mafiosos arrived. Um, they first went to New Bordeaux, well, New Orleans, and then they went to um, Chicago and um, New York. And then it has this really rich mafia history. And that's like the guy who might have been um, responsible for a JFK assassination. Um, it's a really fresh setting, right? It's like a big American city, but it's not something we've seen a lot. And it's a city that's really interesting because it has so many different contrasts. It's a city that's really joyous, that's really celebrating life. You have things like Mardi Gras, like the carnival. You have second lines of people doing like funeral processions and that kind of stuff. Yeah, live and let die. <laughs> it's, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a town that people go to to celebrate and to have fun. It's also a, um, like it's an industrial town. Like it's actually on the Mississippi Delta. Um, so all of this, creates this really contrasty city with a lot of different ways that we can like represent that in our version in New Bordeaux. And it's also giving us a lot of opportu opportunity to show how a mafia actually takes hold in that kind of city, mm -hmm. how it's controlling that. When you're going a little bit back, you're peeling back the curtain, you're going into, I don't know, um, well, we're in a hideout right here, right? You're going into an underground, you go into a backyard, and we can actually see how like all this entertainment leads to drugs and prostitution, how all of this trade leads to people um, bribing and doing con smuggling and contraband and those kind of things. Mm. Very interesting. And also, I think it, it sort of makes not just a visual thing, but in terms of the music, you've, you've really gone to town, if you will, on the sort of the theme of that. What, what kind of music is there and what's appropriate for that part of the world? Yeah, and it's so for one, we're set in the 60s, so our soundtrack is going to be awesome. Like, you know, we have over 100 licensed tracks from the Stones to House of the Rising Sun to all of that. But then you also have, it's a jazz, it's the jazz capital yes. of the world probably, right? So you get to see jazz bands. Um, there's also this really dirty blues that we use a lot of the in-game music, which I think sounds very unique. And it's just all, all of it just makes it sound like a game you haven't played before. It's, yeah. And and the main protagonist Lincoln, he's a he's a very different sort of main character in in many ways. What can you tell us of his background and how that comes into play in the game? Yeah, so he grew up in um, New Bordeaux. He's actually an orphan, like he never got to meet his parents. He's probably half black. We don't even quite know. Mm -hmm. He grew up with this guy called Father James in a Catholic orphanage. Um, but he never really belonged to anybody, right? Because he's half black, he's an orphan, he's always been looking for a place to belong. So he falls in with the black mob and that's the first time he kind of feels like family. He feels like his half brother, who's um, Sammy's, Sammy's um, son, somebody he can really connect to. Um, because of his patriotic duty and like a lot of blacks, you know, actually did exactly that, um, serve in um, Vietnam War. He does go to Vietnam, he serves there for several years. Um, he starts becoming special ops, that's where he meets like a CIA, I, CIA agent called Donovan who's going to be in this story as well. So once he comes back he just hooks up with the black mob again and of course the black mob is betrayed by the Italian mob for reasons that become like abundantly clear once he play the story and um, he survives, he manages to actually like come out of this. So he swears, not just revenge, but he says, I'm not just gonna go and kill Marcano, I could do this rather easily, I have, I'm you know, a special ops guy. Um, he actually decides to slowly dismantle his entire empire and go like on a quest for revenge to build his own, um, like, own crime empire out of that. It is interesting with his background because you can really tell when you see the, the sort of the close combat actions that he, he knows how to kill a man. He's very proficient in it. Uh, what, what, what went into the sort of design choice of, of some of these really brutal finishes? Um, we want to make sure that Lincoln feels like somebody who can own the battlefield, like somebody who has learned this kind of fighting um, from Vietnam. It very much is a matter of 
like mental state and like I feel like between his motivation and the fact that there's clearly no laugh, love lost between him and the Italian mob, that's certainly a way in which you can interact with that. Um, you can actually turn that off if you want to do non-lethal takedowns. You can actually do that in the game. But we figured this time and place is actually really like, it very much represents the way that um, crime and the mafia in um, America changed in the 60s because it turned from very romanticized um, Italian mob, men of honor, like all white collar crime, something that nobody really was acknowledging, to fresh blood coming in, uh, the fight actually spilling out into the streets, people being brutally murdered on the street, and the public actually becoming aware of that. Um, so Lincoln Clay, I mean, he does it actually quite tactically. He actually does it to shock his enemies. He's actually doing it to tell Sal Makano, I'm coming for you, and he's slowly getting his atten attention as he's going through the game exactly that way. That is interesting because it, it did shock me a little bit, so I guess I get th that point got through. Uh, another thing that struck me about the game is, is the, the system you have for underbosses. That uh, is really, really interesting and dynamic, and I think that is something that, um, especially how you sort of your loyalty, their, how their loyalties uh, change depending on your actions. Mm -hmm. um, just how deep is that system, and, and can you tell us how that plays out? So loyalty is actually a good term to use because they're not your friends and they're not friends each other, right? Mm -hmm. They are. Um, they're gathering around you because they're hardened criminals, they finally see that chance to take over the city. So one of the talents that Lincoln has is to actually get them together and convince them that, you know, what we should be doing is together. By doing or to do that, he's promising them part of the city, though, and mm -hmm. he's promising them that they're going to be part of this empire. So whenever we take over part of the city, we have to assign it to one of these guys. So we meet in this villa in the swamp lands, and everybody's coming together, and now you have to make good on your promises. And then if you do neglect somebody, we see this in this specific playthrough mm -hmm. where Burke didn't get any territory. We did not make good on our promises. We just wanted to make sure we're taking that all the way to the conclusion. The guy actually needs to be able to say, I've had enough. I'm going to walk out on you. Um, he betrays Lincoln. He's actually going to come after Lincoln. And the only way to deal with that, if you don't want to ignore it, is to then go after him and kill him. But that's just one specific playthrough. And that mm -hmm. might not happen for you or for me. You might keep everybody happy if you're really diplomatic. Um, you can do that. You might lose more than one. Although, you know, killing Burke and this specific playthrough probably sends a pretty good message. Um, mm -hmm. So there is a loyalty system and there are a whole bunch of ways in which you can actually do that. It definitely is centered around how you're divvying up the city and making good on your promises. There are a couple of other ways in which you can do it. There are passion activities for these guys where you can do them favors. There are ways in which you can waste their earn, like smuggling, running contraband, and building up the business as well mm. to make sure everybody feels like you're actually taking care of them. That's interesting. Uh, what is it, I mean, apart from sort of losing that character, what is it that you lose if you lose Burke as, as, as in this playthrough? Yeah. So all three spokes have an, an earn ladder, right? Like the the more of the city they control, the more money they're making, the more influence they can take over the city. By doing so, they're able to recruit additional associates, people they know, people they might actually be able to bribe because they have enough money. So that's where these associates can actually help you. We saw some of it, like Vito's muscle coming in, but there are other ways to actually undermine the social structures. You might get an in at the police department, like the police dispatcher, who, with for enough money and enough bribes, is actually going to call off the cops for you so you don't have to worry about them. You might get an in with the local um, telephone operator, like those dispatchers, because it's the 60s. People were actually connecting calls when you were making it. And because it's the 60s, nobody's going to get in their cell phone and just call the cops. They have to run to a phone booth to call the cops. So you might be able to bribe that person and say, make sure those calls don't go out because I don't want to deal with them actually calling somebody on me. So that's all in the individual spoke characters. Um, spoke characters is internal, like the underbosses we're talking about, like Cassandra, Burke, and Vito. And, um, once you upgrade them, to that's one of the reasons why you want to upgrade this guy over this guy. Um, once you lose them, you just won't be able to make any more progress because they won't be able to introduce you to any more of the associates. We're just we're just around four, less than four months out from, from the release date. Four months, something I like that. So. I'm not good at math. So we're coming out on October 7. I'm going to come out for PS4, Xbox One, and PC. And yes, it's going to be October 7. So I think that's... Yeah, that's pretty soon. That's it. Thank you so much Thanks for your time. time. It's over. This is never going to be over. But though you live to let him drown alive. Ah. Well, you keep going, you got nine more. Let that fever make the water. Do it now. I shot him right in the head. Once. I was just, you shot him once. Yeah.